Today we're going to be reviewing the all new and old Toyota Camry. Now unlike most reviews that would bash these cars for being really boring and compare how many golf bags you can fit in the trunk, we're going to be taking a look under the hoods and underneath both of these vehicles to see what's inside and how it works. Now both of these grey cars are LE base models and produce roughly about 200 horsepower. However under the hood these couldn't be any more different. In my 2004 Toyota Camry we have a 3 liter V6 producing 210 horsepower and 220 pound feet of torque. And in the 2019 Camry we have a 2.5 liter four cylinder producing 203 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. So what's actually changed underneath the skin of these two Toyota Camrys over the last 15 years? We're going to start by taking a look underneath the hood. Under the hood of the new Camry we have Toyota's A25A FKS engine situated transversely for front wheel drive. Taking a look at the layout here we have the engine slightly on the passenger side while the transmission is underneath here on the driver's side. We have the battery at the top here, the air box over here, we have the ECU and relay box on this side and the coolant and windshield washer jugs on this side. Now underneath the hood of the old camera we have the tried and true 1MZ FE engine situated transversely for front wheel drive. Taking a look at the layout here we have the engine on the passenger side and the transmission over on the driver's side. Now we've got the battery that's near the front of the vehicle and the airbox that goes around to the back of the vehicle. We've got the coolant jug, ABS, and the windshield washer fluid tanks on this side and the air intake duct and relay box over on that side. Now back to the new Camry's engine you can see there's a lot of extra stuff that runs on top of it here. What's really good is it's easy to access all four spark plugs here underneath these ignition coils. We've got a plastic valve cover and this takes 0W16 weight oil. Now one of the things that makes this four banger almost as powerful as the old V6 is the fact that it has direct injection and you can see the high pressure pump over here is driven off of the exhaust camshaft. It'll then take that high pressure fuel down into the injectors into the head. Now this also has port fuel injection and you can see the gas line going off to the fuel rail over here. Now this engine also has an EGR system to reburn exhaust gases for emissions purposes. You can see the cooler for the EGR over here the EGR valve over here and the track where it goes back into the intake. Now on the passenger side of the engine we have a timing chain underneath this cover here which is great because you don't have to service it over the life of the vehicle. Now on the exhaust camshaft you have variable valve timing that's typically oil controlled but on the intake side we have electronic variable valve timing that means there's actually an electric motor with a planetary gear set in there that changes the phase of that intake camshaft. Now back to the old Camry we've got a V6 engine here which is not an exact comparison to the four banger in the new car. We've got three ignition coils with spark plugs that are very easy to access at the front here and then the other three are way back underneath here where you have to remove this intake plenum off which is not very easy to access when you need to do maintenance. Now this engine only has port injection and that means you have the fuel line that comes off over here and it goes into the fuel rail to each individual six cylinders on the intake manifold down inside of here. Now older versions of this engine actually had EGR and it would just hang off of the throttle body over here. Now this engine has a metal valve cover and takes regular 5W30 oil. Now on the passenger side of the engine we have a timing belt which actually needs to be replaced every 140,000 kilometers. Now over on the transmission side of the engine we have the variable valve timing solenoids, one on this bank and one on the rear bank over there. Now these are the traditional oil control style and they're only on the intake camshafts. Now back on the new camera we're going to have a look at the air intake system starting at the front here where cold air enters this tube over here. It's then fed down into the air box through the air filter, the mass airflow center, this rubber hose over here and the drive-by wire throttle body before before going into the plastic intake plenum. Now on the old V6 Camry the setup for the intake is a little bit different. We have cold air that enters over here and then goes down into the air box over here where it's filtered out. We have the mass airflow sensor here, an air resonator box over here, the drive-by wire throttle body and then we have this plastic intake plenum that kind of covers half of the engine and feeds air into the intake manifold down in between. Now the air filter on the new Camry is actually pretty easy to access. You don't need any tools, just two clips. You pick up the air box and remove the filter. Now with the air intake system removed you can see we've got a lot of room here to work and we can have a closer look at things like the EGR cooler off the side of the engine here. We have the drive-by wire throttle body over here. We have the lower radiator hose where it goes into the engine over here and we have the transmission located down below here. Now behind the battery we have the brake booster and master cylinder and it's actually driven off of a vacuum pump which is located inside of here which is driven off of the exhaust camshaft. Now back on the old Camry removing the air filter actually requires you to loosen up two 10 millimeter bolts and then I can lift up the air box and remove the filter. Now with the air intake system removed on the old camera you can see that frees up a lot of space on top of the transmission over here. We have the drive-by wire throttle body over here. Now the brake booster and master cylinder are the traditional type except that it actually draws its vacuum from the engine vacuum behind the throttle.
throttle body. Now the old Camry actually has two air intake paths. The blower one here actually goes into a surge tank, which is actually this white tank underneath the battery tray over here. And that's to help with acoustics during idle. And when the engine speed starts to pick up, the computer can control this diaphragm over here to open up this flap to allow more air into the air intake box. Now the new Camry just has a very simple surge tank, where it's just an extra tank that hooks up to the air intake to filter out any unwanted residents. Now back on the new Camry, the brake lines actually run from the master cylinder all the way over to this side of the vehicle where we have the ABS actuator that's responsible for the ABS, stability control, traction control, as well as the autonomous braking features on this vehicle. Now on the old Camry, the brake lines have to run from the master cylinder across the firewall and then out to the front here to the ABS actuator. Now this vehicle doesn't even have traction control. Now the brake setup on the new Camry is fairly straightforward. We've got a floating caliper with a single piston and the rotor. Now the rear brakes on the new Camry are very simple. We've got a floating piston with a single caliper that grabs on to a disc brake. Now at least on the new Camry they give you the cable operated brake that operates the parking brake inside of the drum. There's no electric actuators here. Now the stock brakes on the old Camry is a single piston design but I've actually upgraded mine to a dual piston design with a larger rotor from a Lexus. Now the back of the old Camry we have a small single piston caliper over a disc rotor and a drum for the parking brake. Now the exhaust systems on these vehicles are going to be completely different. This being the four cylinder means it only has one bank which means it has one exhaust manifold that comes off the back here and it goes into a catalytic converter. The exhaust then comes through this flex pipe to the O2 sensor through another catalytic converter over here. Then we've got this giant resonator before going out through the tailpipe to the muffler. Now in this LE model there's only a single exhaust outlet and it's bolted on over here for a very simple bolt-on replacement. Now if you had dual exhaust on the left side this is where the muffler would be it's just an empty spot for now. Now on the V6 camera we have two exhaust manifolds, one at the back which you cannot see and one at the front here which is waiting to burn your hand when you're changing oil. Each bank also has its own catalytic converter integrated into the manifold. The front exhaust bank will then make its way down underneath the vehicle here which is going to join with this Y pipe where it joins from the other bank and then go into the flex pipe and then back out to the resonator. Now that exhaust will then continue out the resonator over here and then out the tailpipe at the back. This Camry is no exception to rusty heat shields. Now the muffler on the old Camry is bolted on. It's pretty easy to replace. And these Camrys only came with a single muffler setup. Now the new Camry has electric power steering, which is great for fuel economy, but it also doesn't rob it of any horsepower. Now the electric steering motor on this vehicle is actually located down on the rack itself over here beside the exhaust manifold. Now just behind the drain bolt over here is the power steering motor, and that sits on the steering rack, which is bolted to this subframe. Now the new Camry actually has a little duct underneath to cool off that electric power steering motor. Now the old Camry has hydraulic power steering, which means that you have two lines here that come off of the reservoir to feed the power steering pump on the drive belt side of the engine. Now that pressurized oil is then sent over here to the rotary valve inside of the steering rack to give steering assist. Now over on the passenger side of the engine we have the alternator and its drive belt. Now once all these hoses are out of the way it should be pretty easy to change out. Now the drive belt itself actually has a tensioner which is located down inside of here and there's a fair bit amount of room to work in here. Now also on the passenger side of the camera we have the alternator at the top here. Now even though this is a V6 engine there's still a lot more room around it to work. We've got a good amount of room for the drive belt over here and it's the tensioner is actually just this bolt down here. Now the only downside is the V6 Camry has a secondary belt that goes to the power steering pump way down inside of there and that's the tensioner but it's actually easily accessed from inside the fender liner. Now from inside the passenger side wheel well this is where the power steering pump is accessible and it's adjuster over here and belt. We have the crank pulley over here and then we have the AC compressor located up at the front here. And here's a look at the back of that power steering pump next to the rear manifold from underneath. Now one thing I don't like about the new Camry is the placement of the ECU underneath the hood is very easy to damage in a front end collision. Now on the old camera the ECU is buried way out of harm's way underneath the glove box. Now just when you thought the differences end there we're next going to talk about the cooling system starting here on the new Camry. Here we have the radiator cap which connects to the top of this plastic radiator over here. We've also got a line that goes to the throttle body and another one that goes to the cooling reservoir. Now what's cool about the new cooling system is it's actually electronically controlled. That means that there's actually an electric thermostat that lives off of this lower radiator hose over here before it's then driven by an electric water pump. That's right, it's not driven by the serpentine belt anymore. It's actually an electronic water pump. The good thing is it's actually pretty easy to remove just four bolts and this electrical connector that controls it and it should come right out. Now the one fan at the front here is also electronically controlled and it's also got this pretty cool fan blade design. And the electronics don't even 
even end there. Since we've got coolant going to the throttle body, the heater core, and the transmission, we've got individual shutoff valves for each circuit over here. Now the cooling system is more traditional on the old Camry. We've got the upper radiator hose over here and the radiator cap with the coolant jug over here. The water pump itself is actually driven off of the timing belt, which is a lot more difficult to access. That's why it's recommended to change the water pump at the same time you're changing the timing belt. Now this one has two radiator fans at the front here. On the back of the engine, we have the two heater core hoses that run over to the other side. Now if we follow the lower radiator hose, it actually comes into the thermostat housing located inside of here. And there's a lot of wiring and hosing and the air intake box that need to be removed to access it. Now some of the new safety features include this millimeter radar sensor behind the Toyota emblem for autonomous braking features. No radar sensors on the old one. We've also got the camera mounted on the windshield for lane keep assist. The old Camry's got two dash cams in it. The new Camry also has like 10 airbags even in the side of the back seats. The old Camry gives you a whopping two airbags. Besides that the old Camry gives you good old seat belts and brakes that you operate yourself. Now underneath the new camera you can see that almost everything is completely covered in plastic which makes it nice and flat, great for aerodynamics and protection from salt water and corrosion with the exception of the exhaust which has to be left open because of heat. Now with the under panel removed you can see we've got clear access to the engine on this side and the transmission over on this side. Now this transmission is actually Toyota's UB80E transmission for front wheel drive. Now there's actually no transmission pan on the bottom here. There's just a drain bolt over here for the fluid. The pan itself is this plastic one up here for the valve body at the front. We have these coolant lines on the side here that actually circulate engine coolant to cool off the transmission as opposed to cooling off the transmission oil itself. Now further on top of the transmission you can see we have the transmission link through cable which shifts the gears of the transmission. No push button transmissions there. Now moving up from the transmission you can see we have the starter motor located at the front here. Just two bolts and an electrical connection and it's easy to access from down below. Now over here inside of the driver's side wheel well we've got the coolant hoses that go to the transmission cooler over here. On the other hand the old Camry pumps transmission fluid to the radiator for cooling. Now the fill plug for the transmission is located on this side and it has to be pumped in. Now underneath the old Camry you can see that the plastic ends right at the front here and the rest of it is left fully uncovered. We have the transmission on this side over here and the engine on this side here. Now the transmission drain plug is located over here. The differential is inside of this housing over here before going over to the axles on either side. Now if you ever wanted to drop the tranny pan on the old Camry, you need to lift the transmission up in order to access the pan bolts inside of here. Now the transmission in the old Camry is the U151 5-speed automatic transmission. And what's great about old vehicles is it actually uses a traditional style dipstick which will allow you to measure the exact transmission fluid and refill it through this hole when you're changing it. And looking down in front of the transmission, we have the transmission shifter cables down in here. Started on the old Camry is located underneath this air intake duct. Once you removed all this ducting, we should have access to the starter here. Now although most Camrys have traditionally been front wheel drive, the TNGA platform that this is based on actually supports all wheel drive. Here we are at the passenger CV axle where it comes out of the transmission and you have a big cavity here where a transfer case could be for all wheel drive. The drive shaft would actually head out over the steering rack over here and into the exhaust cavity down the drive shaft tunnel with minimal modifications to the exhaust all the way to the back to power the rear wheel. Now at the back here we've got a lot of room for a rear differential that will accept a propeller shaft coming down here once you reroute the exhaust and the CV axles will just take it out to either wheel. Now the oil pan access is fairly straightforward. We've got the drain plug over here to drain oil and a traditional spin-on style cartridge filter over here. Changing oil on these old Camrys are quite a pain especially when the engine is hot and that's because the oil filter is located underneath this hot exhaust manifold. Good luck changing that without making a mess. Now while the oil filter is accessed from the top there's actually this black plastic piece over here that's meant to drain some of that oil coming off the filter all over the subframe and make a huge mess on the oil pan. <laughs> now looking up into the front here we've got the radiator fan. We've also got this active engine mount that, and we've got a resonance damper that sits on the subframe over here. Now this being the V6 model there isn't a whole lot of room ahead of the engine from underneath here to see the cooling fans or the AC compressor. Now if we take a look at the front suspension in the new Camry, we've got a McPherson style strut that connects to a steel knuckle over here. On the bottom here we have a stamped steel lower control arm with a bolt-on style ball joint which is fairly easy to replace. On the back here we've got a stabilizer link, it's probably made of aluminum. Now the lower control arm bolts are pretty easy to access over here and at the back here. And finally we've got the inner and outer tie rods and the CV boot. Now while a McPherson front suspension certainly isn't giving you the best handling, it sure will be much easier to replace parts when they wear out 
down the road. Now at the front of the old Camry we have a very similar suspension setup to the new one with a McPherson strut that connects to the steering knuckle at these two bolts over here. Now at the bottom here we have a stamped steel lower control arm that attaches to the subframe at the back here and over here. We have the stabilizer link that attaches to the strut and the sway bar that goes over to the other side and the inner and outer tie rod for the steering. The old Camry also uses a bolt-on style ball joint which is pretty easy to replace. Now while most of the components in the older generation Camry are fairly easy to change out, the lower control arms are quite the test and that's due to this bow tie bushing over here. This bolt's easy to access but its counterpart which is actually located underneath this engine mount here is pretty difficult to access which means you actually have to lift up the engine and completely remove this mount in order to access that bolt underneath there. Now the front bearings on the new Camry are bolted on which is going to be much easier to change out. Likewise the old Camry uses a press on bearing in the front which is much more difficult to service if you need to replace it. Now the rear suspension of the new Camry follows the TNGA platform and it's a new independent setup. We've got the shock absorber over here and the spring separated from it and that attaches to the rear lower control arm. Now over on this side we have the trailing arm or control blade, it attaches to a steel knuckle and at the top here we have the upper control arm or camber link. Taking a look from behind we have the tow link and the sway bar which attaches to the control blade at the stabilizer link over here. Now while this multi-link setup is actually beneficial to the new Camry's handling characteristic, it's definitely going to cost you a little bit more when you have to maintain it because you've got a lot more moving parts. And here's a look at that multi-link suspension from underneath. You can see we've got a cam bolt adjustment for this rear lower arm. And here's where the sway bar goes over to the other side. Now the rear suspension on the old Camry is quite different. We've got a McPherson strut on the back here that attaches to the knuckle. Then at the bottom we have a lateral link and a toe link as well as the sway bar link over here. And then at the front here we have the trailing arm as well as the sway bar which is pretty thin. And you can see we've got much less components underneath the suspension of the old Camry which should be much easier to maintain. Now the EVAB canister on the new Camry is located just above the rear subframe. It also has its own vacuum pump. The old Camry's got a nice metal gas tank. We've got the vent lines that run up over here before going into the charcoal canister buried way up above the rear subframe. Now with all the changes to the new Camry, you might ask where has Toyota actually cut costs? The answer to that is actually in places where you don't really care about or see. For example, on the new one, the metal is much thinner and on the old one, way more solid. The same thing carries out on all the body panels this one being much thinner than this one over here. Now the changes are more apparent on the interior. While this might be a little soft touch here, the rest of this door panel is all scratchy hard touch plastic and it carries over on the instrument panel as well. A little bit of soft touch at the top, but everything that's hard touch plastic is really grainy and scratchy feeling and doesn't give you a sense of quality. The rear seat doesn't even carry through with hard touch plastics on the top as well. Now back on the old Camry, soft touch materials on the top here. And what actually is hard touch plastic is a very smooth feeling textured plastic that doesn't have that scratchy grainy feeling that the new one does. Now the rear seat cushion on the new Camry is pretty thin, I could put my hand around it. And the rear seat cushion on the old one is much thicker and comfier. All the pillar trims feel really scratchy and the headliner feels like cardboard. Now I've actually wrapped my headliner in suede, but before that it didn't feel nearly as flimsy as the new one. And the wheel liners on the new Camry just feel like a cardboard insert, whereas on the old Camry it's a sprayed in liner. They've also thinned out the plastics under the hood. We've got the air intake from the new Camry here, made of a much softer plastic than the one from the old Camry. Now the front bumper on this new Camry is made of many different pieces due to its styling, and that's going to cost you a lot more if you get into a collision. The material itself is not very resistant to dents, it's very soft, compared to the old Camry which is a simple one piece design. And it's made of a much thicker, more durable plastic. Now on the new Camry, ahead of the strut tire, they've just cut out this section of material here, probably because it was non-structural, and just left a plastic liner over here. Whereas on the old Camry, there's a solid wall going all the way up to the headlights. The exhaust shield here is pretty thin on the new one and a little bit thicker material on the old one. And then of course there's all the fasteners that they've saved by having things just snap right in and a shorter wiring harness for the ECU by putting it out here. Now, I noticed a lot of newer cars are using these plastic pieces to guide the wires and clip them in. However, once they do break, they're kind of proprietary to replace. However, the older vehicles tend to just use the generic plastic clips on the harnesses. And here we've got the foam engine cover for the new car. You can see it doesn't look that great, but it's probably good at sound deadening whereas the old one is a nice fancy looking cover. Now in terms of reliability, only time will tell. This vehicle has over 300,000 kilometers on it and it runs nice and smooth. And the new one's already got about 40,000 kilometers on it, so it's got a long legacy to live up to the old one. Now for 300,000 kilometers, the bottom of this car is pretty clean. And we know this Camry's tried and true because it's got the mandatory dent on the rear. And that's pretty much a wrap on the mechanicals of the new and old Toyota Camry. Now you tell me in the comment section below which one you think is better. Make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next car review is going to be. And subscribe for more videos just like this one.